Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. So another week of s and S. I think we're at what, episode 190 now as I'm recording this. And just a couple little things to talk about and we'll get into some machining this week. I did a, another gearbox shaft at work and I didn't film the entire machining process of this shaft, but you know, I've been sharing pictures and some uh, short clips of it there on uh, Instagram and my Facebook pages. So. Uh, be sure to follow me over there if you're on social media and you can kind of see some daily pictures. I, I usually try to post stuff every day of whatever it is I'm working on at the time. Uh, sometimes it's just repetitious stuff, so I don't really have a lot to share. And other times I'm doing some interesting work. And I, and I try to share that over there on the Instagram page because it's really easy. You know, it's just to, uh, upload it, put a little description, and bam, it's on there. So been doing a little bit of that. But one of the one of the aspects of the machining for this shaft was a little bit interesting that I thought was a little bit norm, a little bit out of the normal. So I took the camera and got some video of that. So that's what we're going to talk about this week. It's some deep hole drilling and tapping in this shaft. Okay, so that's coming up real soon in the episode. There, uh, I got a couple new tools here that I purchased. I was going to show you, and uh, uh, just real quick, I don't have any updates for you this week on the construction, and and uh, I had talked about. Uh, previously that we were going to be having concrete work done this week and I've had to push that back I pushed it back two weeks uh, just some personal issues has come up and some other uh, permitting issues has come up with the placement of some of this concrete because I had some other plans for uh, more concrete in the back back here but I'm running into issues with that with planning and zoning and that kind of stuff so I'm having to go some further steps uh, before I can do that concrete work. I, I need to make sure that all of this is going to be okay before uh, I I'll go ahead with more concrete that I had planned on building on top of that. It's not just a driveway. Uh, if it was just a driveway, it's no issue, but I was planning on doing some more building on top of that. So anyway, I'm working with that. I got more stuff to do there, so uh, it's just going to be a couple more weeks on that, and uh, hopefully all that is going to is going to be able to um, you know go through and uh, get some more work done. So anyway, we'll bring you some more updates on, on that later on as, as I get to it, okay? I did finish the, the last spring perch, which I showed these in last week's episode of s, s machining these out right here and machining that square thread for these sleeves. So uh, if you didn't watch that, go back there and check that out. You might enjoy it, some square threading on the lathe. So we got all four of those done. Now I do have some more work that I need to do as far as these go, we got to do some parting of these, and I got some other parts there in a box that's got to have some modifications done to it as well. Uh, hopefully, we're going to get that get to that real soon, and maybe share that on next week's episode. Okay, I wanted to give a little plug for the Home Shop Machinist podcast. Justin and Max, they're the they're the two guys that uh, that do this podcast, and they try to record a couple times. Uh, a month and they invited me to join them here recently and uh, get on there and have a conversation with them so um, I don't know if the episode will be out by the time this video is released but it should be real soon they're they're gonna be working on the editing there but that was a real that was a real interesting podcast to be on it was just totally off the cuff just the guys asking me questions about my work and you know just all kind of stuff and we really didn't even get to talk about all the things that we had wanted to that we had kind of discussed an email that we might go over so they, they had mentioned maybe us uh, getting back together again another time and uh, kind of carrying on the conversation but uh, be sure to check out that podcast you know give them download it and uh, check it out they've had they've had some other guests on there uh, recently they had Robin Renzetti on there which was a fabulous episode Robin is a wealth of knowledge and uh, has a lot of experience with tool making and precision metrology and things like that. So that was a really good episode. But anyway, I look forward to that podcast coming out and uh, be sure to check that out. Okay. So I uh, got a couple things from KBC Tools this week. They had on sale a uh, precision twist drill, the screw machine drills, which is like I call them stubby drills. So that's the half inch right there. These are the split point grind cobalt. And I got an assortment, just uh, standard sizes from one, si one sixteenth of an inch up to one half of an inch. And 
they had a they had a pretty good price on these, you know. So I went ahead and got that this uh, short assortment of them, just so that I have some because I don't have any of these. I've got like two, and I like using these in lieu of a center drill. These are really good because they're short and they're stout, and they work better than uh, using a center drill if you're just trying to create a center for a pilot, you know, for a drill bit. So uh, these were on sale over there. By the way, I had uh, contacted Chris Brown over there at KBC Tools, and he's always real nice to uh, talk to, and and uh, he always helps me out right there. So I got those, and I've had guys ask me about this. So this is the mist that I run in the Noga Cool, the Noga Mini Cool, which I got another one of those here. I wanted another one, but this is the stuff right here, the Cool Mist Formula number 77. I have a lot of guys ask me what I use, and this is it right here. Uh, it's supposed to be uh, pretty good. You don't have to worry about a lot of that fogging and stuff getting up in the air. I do mix mine heavy, though. I think they recommend 10%, you know, uh, like a 10% ratio or whatever, but I mix mine heavy, and it seems to work a little better for me. But I wanted to get another one of these Noga Mini Cools to use in the shop here. I find that these are super convenient, very easy to place wherever you want on any machine, okay? You've got the little Noga mag base right there. You got a little control valve, a little pull push valve right there, and then you adjust the air pressure with this screw right here. And then you adjust your fluid on this end right there, you know, how little or how much you want fluid to come out of that. Just a super simple setup. This is less than a hundred dollars right here for this for this guy. You just drop this in into your coolant to siphon it, and then hook your airline to that one right there. So I wanted another one of these to use around the shop, so I don't have just the one that I'm trying to uh, float around. So I picked that up. This wasn't on sale, uh, but the the drill bits were on sale. And don't forget that you have a one-time use promo code over there for the rest of the year KBC 25 AB okay so you can use that and you can get 25 bucks off a $100 order over at KBC alright so that was the, the scores from this week right there another reminder too I'm still looking for a buyer for the blast cabinet back back there that model uh, to Trinco model DP850 I had a couple people interested and then they decided they didn't want it so still looking for a buyer for that uh, just trying to uh, find somebody interested in that that wants to make me a reasonable offer on that machine so uh, let me know if you'd be interested in that okay I think that's all I got for you this week so we're gonna go ahead and jump over to the horizontal boring mill and start doing some machining welcome back to the day job guys so this is a shaft that I just have been turning on this week this is a, a gearbox shaft made out of six and a half inch 4140 I didn't get any video of the turning But I did want to get a little bit of video of the drilling and tapping on this end because this is going to be a little bit you know, unique of what, what is normally done. We have a 10 hole pattern on a 4 and 3 quarter bolt circle that's drilled and tapped 6 and a half inches deep. So it's going to go to about right there. Now that the hole isn't tapped that deep, this 4 inches of this is going to be drilled and reamed. It doesn't really need to be reamed, but I've got a a reamer the right size it's a 13 16 diameter hole four inches deep and then from four to six and a half you've got a tapped hole now i believe the way the reason that they design it like this is because there is a, a 22 inch diameter coupling it's kind of like a flywheel but it's actually a coupling that goes on this end and bolted in and they've got long bolts to reach down in there and i believe they wanted the threads on this larger area of the shaft right here instead of out here on this thin wall so 
I've, I've got a print I'm making it to print I've also got a sample that we're that we're copying as well it's all the same <clears throat> and this is this is a shaft that's been in service since I believe the mid 1980s so it's been running for approximately 30 years and over that usage these holes because they're so close to this wall here it's starting to distort this diameter as well as the face so they wanted us to replace the shaft with a brand new a new material new shaft so that's what we're doing right there I'm gonna give you some video of drilling and tapping I'm actually still waiting on my tap I'm thinking it might be here today uh, we had to order one yesterday and uh, extended length and I got we found one and funny thing is is that I had kind of forgotten to uh, check the length of my tap drill size which is 11 sixteenths and I was thinking that it was long enough and come to find out that it was a little bit too short to get the full six and a half inch depth <laughs> So I ran up to my shop and I found exactly what I needed. This is an extra long 11 16 taper shank drill and it's got plenty of length there. I think we got an eight and a half inch cut. Yeah, so that's going to work out great for getting them all the way up in there that I need. We'll use a, this is a number two Morse and I have a number five to number two Morse taper adapter that will go into the, go into the spindle here and use that. I'm also using a Blake coax indicator and what I had done is I set this up in a V-block and turned it vertical over there in the knee mill, centered up the end of the shaft, got it all squared up and then spotted in the proper hole pattern using the digital readout. I don't have a readout over here so it's a little bit, a little bit harder to get a true bolt circle over here. So I'm just uh, indicating with the Blake. We got the first one indicated. That should be within one, one and a half thousandths of uh, being in the center of that that uh, center hole right there. So we'll go ahead and get started getting the first one drilled. Hopefully my tap will show up today and we can start getting them tapped also. Wanted to show you the setup, talk about it for just a second as well. I'm using this big milling vise right here. I've got extra extra tall jaws that will handle up to six and a half this is a uh, this is turned down just a little under six and a half so we've got it held in the vise nice and tight and this other end has got a hole pattern drilled in it too i've already done this just using my travel dials and located the center and then move each direction proper distance to get the full hole pattern drilled and tapped there so we've got this big angle plate pulled up to one of those holes and held down to the table so it should help support the shaft with the vise here to keep from either trying to push back, which I don't think it would do anyway, or rotating or moving around. So we got two nice hold downs there to keep the shaft in place. This is a 7 16th drill bit that's brand new. I'm gonna use it, there's the six and a half inches to the yellow line. I'm gonna use that as a pilot. And we're just gonna use the 11 16th to drill it to the proper tap size. get so far in there you can't really get this drill to evacuate the chip so you got to do it manually and put a little squirt of cutting oil in there to keep everything lubed up you see the chips stop trying to come out they start packing in there so you just got to keep evacuating them
Almost there. Alright, we just made our yellow line disappear, so that's going to be our depth. Alright, we're going to go in with our tap drill size. Grind looks good. I inspected it when I grabbed it. It looked like it had a fresh grind on it that was never used. Running 358 RPM. Not sure what the feed rate is. I just, feed rate I run by, by feel over here, by sight. Uh, pull your auto feed every so often just to help break that chip. Try to eliminate that right there, the helicopter effect. A little shot of lube to keep things lubricated and from uh, sticking too bad in there. To, them chips as they're spinning around. What I might try on the next one is go ahead and drill it to our, our reamer size for our, our four inch depth, 13 16 hole. All right, there's our bottom right there. I painted a line so I know where it's at and I can feel it bottomed out. So what we what we might try though is go ahead and drill in at our four inch depth, ream in it. That way it gives clearance for this drill to evacuate chips. I heard a UPS truck back in. My tap came in, went over there digging for it. Three quarter sixteen. The hurdle brand, that's the MSC house line of tooling. USA. I thought it would have been an import. That's a USA made. It looks good. Nice and sharp. So this is a... Okay, that's a starter tap, which is which is fine. We've got a, a good bit of clearance in the bottom of the hole for the threads. Yeah, that's going to work out good. i to put my square shank out here at the end. All right. We're going to go ahead and get our drill size, uh, get it drilled for our, our reamer. So we got a brand new 13 16 reamer. This is the Yankee Corporation tools. You can get this from McMaster Car. This is also another really good quality of tool made in USA. Anytime we need reamers, we always order it from McMaster. They have them in stock and get them the next day. Good quality stuff there. Every one of these reamers that I've gotten have been really good, run nice and straight. I just want to do a check. Time for our reamer. Slow the feed round, uh, the feed rate down, and kick the feed. Slow the speed down, kick the feed rate up. We got our 
We've got our yellow line there that indicates our four inch depth. Okay, I can manually feel that it's on the bottom of the hole there. So we're good. We'll need to put us a chamfer on the end, but let's go ahead and, uh, well, yeah, we'll go ahead and do that next. Just want to touch it, break it. That looks good right there. Time to tap the first one. Go ahead and get us a little bit of oil on the threads here. And we're going to shoot us some up inside there. I think we'll use the classy Sterrett 91D today. Now this is the this is the largest tap that this tap wrench is designed to fit, three quarter inch. We got a spring loaded center. Good. That kind of tap there is also considered a pulley tap. If you've got a job, say like a pulley or a shiv that's got you know a large diameter and you got a little hub down here that you need to put a set screw in, that's where taps like this come in handy. You can also use a regular tap and a Walton tap extension, those work good too. But if you got a pulley tap or an extra long tap, I think it does even better. Okay, getting close to the bottom there. You feel the chips packing. And we hit our mark. I like to go ahead and take these pointers out of there so you don't stab yourself with them. Okay. Looks good. We're going to use our long wand and a rag to try to get most of those chips out of there. We'll have to wash it in the uh, cleaning tank as well. It's our solvent degreaser that we use, fast evaporating. Hole number one down. Can't even see the threads. <laughs> so damn deep in there. Alright. We'll go on to the next one and get another one done. I'm just eyeballing the next center with this pointer there. Just getting it real close. And then we're going to take that out and we're going to put in the coax. And use that to find the center of that point there. I got this MT5 to 3. It's adapter. This is a, basically it's an end mill holder. I've been dressing the tang here because it's a little bit snug in this spindle. We got it in there now. Just give it a few taps with the nylon on there to make sure it's seated. All right, we got the Blake coax with the center pointer in there, center point finder. And it fits that shank real good. Slide it all the way in. I don't tighten down on this, but I just touch it so that it don't won't spin. Just barely touch it. Go up 
to that little line right there. Okay. A little low. That's all it needed. All right, side to side. Go one side right there. It's uh, three. Looks like we're in one thousandths, which is which is good to go. It's really hard on this to get it absolutely dead perfect. A little bit harder than a a, a mill. The spindle's got a little bit of movement in it. And you can see right there. So once I get this within a thousandths, I just call it good. We're we're there. In other cases, we'll stick an indicator on the chuck here and sweep it in with a test indicator. I'm using the reamer size drill first on, on this second hole. We'll go in our four inch depth. And uh, after that, I'll, I'll go in there with the 11 16 drill. And hopefully that'll make drilling just a little bit easier so that there's a pocket there for the, uh, the chips to kind of go into as I'm drilling. All right, we got that one drilled to depth. We'll take that one out. And put it in our long drill for our tap size. Always give the shank a good wipe off. Seat the tang and drive it home. Put it in gear, always important. And let's see how that does. If it helps us at all. all right, I'm gonna go ahead and inject. It looked like the chip stopped coming out of there, so I don't want to get packed in there too tight. Now, this chuck right here seems to seat a little bit better if you open it up so you don't tap on the jaws itself. But take that nylon and just give it a few little taps to make sure it's seated firmly into that taper. Well, there's the first two done. I don't know if you can see it on camera there. We're going to shine our light down it. But it looks good. So, obviously, we got eight more to do. I'm not going to keep sharing the same old thing. But I will bring you back one more time to show you a completed job here, okay? Alrighty, we got it all finished up. All ten holes done. Everything worked out real good. Um, I'm happy to see see this one completed now. It, it is done. I just need to do a little bit. Uh, we got to do some cleanup, obviously, but this one's ready to go back there to the guys and <coughs> get ready to, uh, for assembly. So, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll bring you back soon. Show you some more work around here. Here's another boring mill job I did this week. I had two of these Riersford pillow block bearings that are Babbitt lined and this is something that I do uh, usually once or twice a year 
I have to bore these things out to a specified size in order for a carbon split bushing to go in there. So uh, right there I'm making a pass and cutting some of the babbit out of there and then I've got another clip showing uh, getting into the cast iron part of the bearing and, and boring it the size and I took a couple pictures of what it looks like at the end there. So here you can see me, I'm actually cutting into the cast iron and I'm taking, I'm removing 300,000 per pass right here. So usually I just dial over the bar 150,000 to remove 300,000 out of the bore. And I got one more little short clip here for you. I showed this in a previous episode a few weeks back. So that's a sleeve that I machined out of a piece of steel tubing. And you see it's got that sharp edge on it whenever you part it off. If you don't have a, a tool that's kind of got a, a lead angle on it, that'll pop it off there. But I like to do this right here. Stick it in the mill vise uh, just where it fits in between the jaws. And I use a soft blow hammer and just tap on it very lightly and it basically just shears that sharp edge off of your part and it always works really good for me it's not suitable for every job but for general purposes it, it does a pretty good job so that's just a little trick for you right there you might want to give it a try and this is what that little sleeve was for i had a roller that had a bad bearing fit on one end so i had to bore that thing out and sleeve it and install new bearings in it